Alright, hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead, Patera and Gabriel with you today. We are going to be putting some eggs into the incubator. Now, Gabriel is going to be learning how to do this. This is going to be his project. So this is going to be his baby. Now he's grown up for a long time now seeing how many incubators? How many times have we incubated eggs? Uh, beyond imagination. <laughs> right? But this is going to be his baby. So. Some of these eggs may do really well, some may not. We don't know, and that's okay. It's the learning process. You have to fail, and sometimes you do a lot of falling down before you run. So we're gonna have some fun today, so let's get started. Okay, son, so first things first. Here are the eggs that we're gonna be incubating. We have decided to do quail, and we have two types of quail here. Actually, potentially three. One is a hybrid then we have a purebred, and then we have the Caternix, okay? We'll talk about that in a second. Then over here, we have a sweet little girl that your, uh, my husband, your daddy, just loves. This is his favorite hen. He won't admit that, but it's true, people. And I've been collecting her eggs. Now, I don't know if we're going to get anything out of these, but at least we're going to know that we tried. <laughs> So as I was saying, okay, so here's the deal, okay? Son, you know that we've had quail for a long time, and these are your standard Caternix quail, okay? And we have, we have quite a few, but, you know, every year or two, it's good to put some in the incubator to keep everything fresh and going or get new ones in or whatever. Now, the thing about quail, and I'll say this from the get-go, I may be putting, or you, excuse me, you may be putting 24 or however many eggs into the incubator. I have found every time that I have incubated quail eggs, if I get a 50 plus percent hatch rate, meaning half of them hatch or more, I've done really, really, really good, okay? So know that they are difficult to hatch, okay? So I'm not gonna go crazy with numbers this time. We're only gonna put about 24 in total, which is kind of low for a lot. A lot of people do like dozens and dozens at a time. We've done a big run. We did a big run last year, but we're not going to for this time, okay? Because this is a teaching situation. But anyway, so understand that if you get 50% to hatch, and then within eight weeks, that's when they start, that's when they're fully feathered and begin laying their own eggs by eight weeks old. If you have at least 25% of that or 50% of that, you've done really, really well. So you might put in 24 eggs, but you might only end up anywhere from having, in the end, five to 10. Don't be surprised, I'm just saying. So this egg, it's kind of the shape of a bullet. <laughs> Actually, this little girl, she's so sweet and she's out and rogue all the time. So because she's out, she gets out every day and she runs rogue and she runs up on the porch and she's chitty chatty and James just loves her. She lays her eggs in different places. She's done all kinds of crazy things. We love her, and her she is a turkin or a naked neck. Kind of look alike. He, he, go, he goes for that look. <laughs> but anyway, I have been collecting her eggs over the last week or two to see if I could incubate them because I wanted to see if we could get any more turkins. So we may or may not because, you know, she has to be hanging out with the roosters a lot in order to have babies. I'm just saying. Okay, son. So we have three of these types of incubators. I've been using them for years and years and years. And I love them, they're easy. They are still working really well. I cleaned them up today. So this is what we're gonna work with here. The reason I'm choosing this is because it's typically, you know, a situation where you have a smaller hatching, meaning you don't put as many in. And then number two, you have to be in charge of being mama hen and turning the eggs. I think that's good. I think that's good experience. It helps you to also check these things every day, several times a day. So let's get into the nitty gritty. 
Okay, so we're going to get into it. This is actually the Magic Fly. I don't know the particulars if they went in with another company and they changed the name. I don't know all that, folks. I just know that I have two of these. Those were my originals. And then I got this. So it's the same thing, people. And they I've are used identical. them. They are identical. And I've used them. I don't even know. I mean, I've got like 1,200 videos, folks. You'll see them over and over and over again. So anyway, the main thing that you need to know about this particular brand, though, Gabriel, is that it is actually in Celsius. Okay, we actually go by Fahrenheit, but this is in Celsius. Now, you're seeing one at 37.5 and you're seeing one at 38. It's a little bit of each their own. If you look at what most people do for hatching their eggs, they will set their temperature to 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. That translates to exactly 37.5 Celsius. So I hit set right there. I took it downtown to 37.5 and hit set again because this little incubator is automatically at 38. Now, let me tell you right now, I've used this at 38 most of the time. Hey, I didn't have a problem. In fact, I've had 100% hatch rates uh, several times out of these. So, you know, that's a little bit of each their own. So I think we'll do one at 37.5 mm -hmm. just to play with it so you understand that. And then we'll just leave these at th this one right here at 38. Now, let's get into the incubator. Now, right here in the incubator, you're going to see I've got a tray. It comes in three, this little piece comes in three parts. One, two, and then the top, okay? I've already put water in here, and this comes with this little styrofoam thing. You can see we've used this over and over. This is gonna be where you set your eggs on, and then this is obviously where your water tray is. That's to have humidity. You have to have humidity, okay? Regardless of what your incubator is gonna look like, you must have humidity. And somewhere around 55 or so is ideal, or you know what, not, no, not higher than 60 um, for that situation. Now, I don't measure the humidity. You would have to have the, what's it called, the hygrometer? Thing majiggy, you know. I read about it in my science, but I cannot <laughs> remember. Well, I don't worry about that. A lot of people don't. It's kind of like trial and error and a lot of experience. So the main thing that I watch is the temperature. And every few days, I make sure that I fill up my little water tray, this main, this little main center right here. If it overflows a little bit over there, no big deal. Originally, they do come with a little grit, like a little graded little thing that comes on top. I've lost them since we've moved, but that's okay. We'll get by with that when that, come, when that comes around. So, all right. So, we have put the water in. That's important because what we're doing is we're making sure that our incubators are on, stable, and working, and they get to the ideal temperature that we want before we ever put the eggs in. Honey, it's a hygrometer. Mama is from East Tennessee. We don't, we're not fancy. We don't do hygrometer. We do hygrometer. Just, just, just go with it. Just go with it. Now that we got that out of the way, we can move on to real business. Okay. Now I mark my eggs and that is to know, you'll see that once we mark the eggs, that we will know what we're dealing with in the incubator. I also mark my eggs if I if I can with all of my broody hens because what the deal is it's all about turning the eggs it's about knowing you turn the eggs or it's about identifying the eggs when they're under the broody hen and if you mark them you're going to know you know which eggs you know you meant to be there because some girls get in there and lay extra eggs so what I do is I take a Sharpie. Now, we don't go stone cold crazy here, okay? We just, we're simple, simple. And what I do is I mark one side with an X, do all of them that way, and then once it dries for a second, flip them over, and then I put an O. So one side's X and one side is O. That's, that's a blooper reel. <laughs> Okie dokie, artichokey. So you've marked the chicken eggs, the turkin, Miss Red. She's so pretty. Uh, we've marked her eggs on both sides. You've done X's and O's. Now, you could technically do the same thing to the quail eggs. Okay, son. I mean, technically, yes. You ideally, yes. I don't, though. I just try to pay a lot of attention to making sure I, I kind of you sort of do like this roll when you're turning the little quail eggs because they're so little. 
I do have an incubator that has the rails in them and that's the larger incubator and it does the work for you. It actually is more of a tilting situation, but we're not gonna do that this time. We're gonna be hands-on. So I'm not gonna mark, tell you to mark them. I don't think it's necessary. Just know that when you're turning your eggs every day, I always tell everybody three times a day minimum. Morning sometime, afternoonish, lunchish time sometime, and then evening to bed. If you really want to do an awesome job at turning your eggs, I would do five. But again, that's the way we're going to roll. Okay, son, so we're going to take the lid off and you're going to bring uh, Miss Sassy Britches. You're going to bring her eggs over and put them in right here. We're going O's up. O's up. Now, here's the thing. You're putting them in, and I always like to put them the same way. So you've got the little point down this way, same side up. It just is nice to keep them consistent. Yeah, keep bringing them over here. Here's the thing. So we're putting our eggs in today. We're on day zero. I've had to really help folks with understanding this. You don't start turning your eggs today. You will start turning your eggs 24 hours later, roughly. So tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, ideally, is when you're gonna start turning your eggs and mark it as day one. Now your chicken eggs are going to incubate all the way up to day 21. Repeat after me, what did I just say? They are going to rotate until day 21. No, that is not what I said. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, listen, they are going to incubate, that's the incubation period. So. Ideally, they will be in here until approximately day 21. That's when the hatch day is. Mm -hmm. Here's the kicker. You go into lockdown prior to that. What that is, is the final settling time for these eggs. And that's going to happen on day 18. Repeat after me. Day 18. What's day 18? That is lockdown. Oh, I like it. You are learning today. Yeah, you gotta kind of adjust them. This little um, incubator, they hold approximately 10 chicken eggs. Okay, so we've got them all in here. It's a little snug, 10 eggs, 10 chicken eggs. Okay, so we'll candle these on around day seven or so. That's when we'll start candling them to see mm -hmm. if there's life. And like I said before, when we go into lockdown period, which was what day again? Day 18. Day 18, you're doing good. We stop turning the eggs. We what we'll do is we'll come in for this particular one. We'll keep water in this continually as we go, but on day 18, you really want to put a lot of water in here um, because you want to raise the humidity, if possible, on the last days that you have right before hatching. Okie dokie. So we don't start turning until tomorrow, so this is just got to, they just got to sit here and cook. Well, not really. We don't, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I'm not gonna stand like that. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, Burt Reynolds. No, 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 don't put that in there. Don't put <laughs> okay, that listen. Don't put that in there. Listen, listen, listen. So this one is 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 you know fixing, ready to go. My question to you is: is do you want to do 38 or do you want to lower it down to 37.5 to be exact? You don't care. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what to do. We're gonna do it because I want you to learn how to do it. So hit set. Okay, now hit the minus, 37.5. Hit set again. All right. So now what it's going to do is it, it's going to, see, it's already trying to readjust mm -hmm. and lower down. But we're going to go ahead and put the eggs in because like I told you before, um, I've done 38 for years and it was okay. But we're, we did that just for show. So you can see it's already going, going downtown. All right, so let's just take the lid off. And we're gonna start putting these babies in here too. Little doobies. All right, now here's the thing about the quail eggs. All righty, son, quail eggs have a lesser incubation period or time. So instead of chicken eggs are 21 days, quail are only 18, okay? So if you take three days away because you're gonna go into lockdown period, what, what, when does lockdown period begin here? Well, you make me do basic math on the spot at uh, 15. 15, there you go, I like it. Homeschool mama working. Okay, yeah, so these, you should have babies around day 18. And again, 
incubation is not 100%. You may have a baby come out at day 19 in the chickens over here, you know, it, and, and you'll have to deal with different scenarios um, in terms of when do you take them out? When do they dry? Are others pipping? What, what all these other elements are going to be going on typically. So right now, what we're going to do is just put these in here. We've got them set. And again, just like with the chicken eggs tomorrow, Tomorrow is officially day 21, excuse me, day one of the 18. It's 21 for chicken. And that's when we will start rotating the eggs. And we will um, definitely show how we've been doing that probably on the next video, which will be the one where we're candling to see if we have anything at all. I know, I don't know what she was thinking. Girlfriend had a rough day that day. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I like to put my eggs in a spot where I'm constantly at or I see often to remember to turn them. I also like to make myself a, a quick sticky note that says turn eggs. So this is my habit. I take a post-it note and like right here, I'm going to say put this little post-it note. So just put turn eggs. So every time you come in here to get some Doritos or whatever you're doing, you know, uh, did I turn the eggs today? It's a good reminder. Okay, so these are the basics. We've got it set up. In about a week or so, we're gonna know if we've got anything at all, if we need to, you know, what to discard, if we're gonna start over, how does everything look, and we'll do a video on that. You'll be candling the eggs. We'll have to go to a dark bathroom or something to do that, but nonetheless, that's coming up. But this is how you're gonna learn to have a hands-on relationship with your future food providers <laughs> and to appreciate them and to understand the process. All right, guys, you good. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now remember, what did I say? One more quiz. To, so today we put them in the incubator. So when do we start turning them? Uh, day one. When is day one? Day one is tomorrow. Oh. 24 hours. <laughs> High five. That's my boy. All right, guys. Stay tuned for more videos. We have a lot more coming your way. Dick good kiddo. See you on the next video.